Wow, why am I Ooh, back up? Okay, my dog apparently wants to sit on my lap. Hi everyone, welcome back to a new reading vlog. I'm so excited to have you here. It is Sunday. We're starting this reading vlog a day early because I'm off today and I just decided to start it early. Because last week's reading vlog was like entirely me after work, which isn't much. So we're starting it early. My dog really wants to sit on my lap. I'm sorry. So I just want to kind of start off with what I'm reading this week, what I've been reading, and I kind of want to do a full review of The Voting Booth because I ended, I actually finished that book and I have issues, okay? I have an issue. Hey, can you chill, 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 chill? It's fine. She's just so excited that I'm talking. Okay, first audiobook that I am listening to right now is The Treatment, which is the second book in the program. I'm just curious on how they're going to finish the book out because, Claire, are you going to like I'll be on my lap the whole time? I'm kind of curious on how they're going to finish this because I feel like it's just going to be our main characters getting their memories back and fighting the program, which I don't understand how you can fight like a government program. Like, like the one descriptive in the book. So I'm super curious on how they're going to go about that, personally. I really am intrigued on how they're gonna do that. Second of all, I am still reading Love Her or Loser. Will I ever finish it at this point? Can you stop eating my book? Actually, I'm doing pretty good. I have 20 pages left, so let's hope I finish this today. This book is very slow for me and in the relationship it literally for real is just all about the sex. All they do is have sex. Nothing else. That's all they do and that's the only reason why they wrote the relationship to work. And I, I'm iffy about this book. I like the concept of rekindled romance in a marriage because I understand how after a while the romance can start to fade. But in this one, they're just like all, why are you licking my toes? This book is all about the sex and that's it. So I'm gonna push my way through the last couple chapters. It is getting better because they're starting to kind of see one another again and see why they got together. But it's still just really all about the sex, which is kind of annoying. Next book I'm reading is actually on my Kindle. I've had this Kindle since like sixth grade and I finally decided to start using it again. Um, I am currently reading Dirty Like Me by Diane Diamond. There's like a whole series of these books and I'm pretty sure it's just like one of those crazy like romantic novels that is just filled with like cliched sexy moments that like 70 year old women read to rekindle the sex in their life like I'm not even saying that to be rude I just feel like that's what it is but I'm reading that and then I actually added a couple books to my list because I do have Amazon Prime so I do get books for free every month so I added Fine Layla by Meg Elson itchy leg Drowning with Unders by Leah Linda Keek The Stillwater Girls by McKenna I cannot say words and the vine witch so those look very good so I have these couple books on my shelf I'm really really hoping to be able to finish one ebook this week and one physical book not including love her or lose her because I'll probably finish this one today and I'm really hoping to at least get one or two audiobooks done this week I got big plans okay big plans and you know how I made that August TBR I don't think I've read any books off of it my dog is biting my fingers they're biting my finger our puppy's still teething she's only two months old I'm like totally like jumping the ball she's only two months old look at her she's a border collie Claire. <gasps> Clary. oh thank you she is super sweet we're still potty training, so if anybody has any potty training tips, let me know. She really, she won't tell us when she has to go, so we're still taking her out every hour. So if anybody has recommendations on like what to get to help her know to like take us to the door, let me know because it's getting a little stressful. So those are the books I really want to read this week. I need it to be a reading week because I finished a whole book in one. <laughs> Hi! Hi! What? Oh, you just want a hug? So those are the books I really want to read this week. I need it to be a reading week because the other day I finished a whole audiobook in a day, okay? And I was so proud of myself. Lastly, 
lastly, for this little update, what are you doing? You are just ready to play, and I'm not ready, girly. Go I finished the voting booth, like I talked about yesterday, or well, in last reading vlog. I started and finished the voting booth. So, here's my final thoughts on the voting booth. I really, really, really enjoyed how the book talked about a lot of issues that the black community suffer from. So, irracial relationships and how a lot of people still have negative thoughts on them, um, black on black violence, blue on black violence. Um, they talk a lot about how the parents of both the kids, my cats are playing. Hey, <laughs> Zelda, you're being dramatic. Why are you being dramatic? But they talk a lot about black on black violence, black on blue violence, irracial relationships. They talk about how the parents are really afraid for their kids to go out and be activists and do that of their part in making the world better because of the issue of blue on black violence. And they really touch upon that in the last couple chapters because because one of our main characters brother was killed with black on black violence and they see everything that goes on with the black community on blue on black violence and I just really enjoyed how they touched upon that because that's something that personally for me I don't see enough of and I like that being touched upon in books because I think that's something a lot of us need educated a little more on so I really enjoyed that aspect but our main character but the one thing I really disliked about this book is the main character Marva I believe her name is I can't remember exactly she annoyed me so much because she was one of those girls that was like I am better than you like if you don't vote you are a POS I am an activist and you know nothing and that really aggravated me throughout the whole book because she even act like this to this guy that like liked her and I understand the whole point of the book is for her to be pushing the voting system and vote to change lives. I understand that, but it got to the point when it was so aggravating, I was like, Lord help us, please stop. This is too much. Mm. But overall, I did, I did only give it two stars because the main character was so annoying to me. It almost was unbearable. I hated how they made a lot of the romance on the back burner which i feel like if the romance pushed a little bit more it would have been better but the really the only thing that made me give it any stars at all is all the issues they touched upon that were really important that don't get talked about enough okay so i gotta tell you guys a story this this opening is gonna be so long so i'm laying in bed today like you guys know i work second shift so i normally sleep in until 11 o'clock when days i don't work 11 o'clock noon on days I don't work because I don't get home till well after midnight. So I'm laying in bed today and I hear my doorbell ring. No one rings my doorbell because it's so ear pitching. It's the weirdest doorbell. It's not like a normal doorbell. It's like and it drives me up the wall so people don't ring it just out of respect for my ears. So someone rang it while I'm laying in bed and I'm like what? So I get out of bed. I run to the door. I'm like peeking out the window and the door and it there's a big white van in my driveway i'm like okay it's my time i'm gonna get napped i'm gonna get snatched up it's fine it was a freaking amazon guy bringing my dog's bark box i don't get deliveries on sunday so that's why i thought i was gonna get snatched but apparently not it was just my dog's bark box which she's right here again if you can't see her so we're gonna open it because the last bark box she got was so cute it was like um the olympics or something like that it was so adorable she absolutely loved it okay so we're gonna open this bark box i just took a thumbnail and clary is so excited for the bark box yes you are you're so excited for the bark box so the bark box is literally just dog toys last week we did the kitnip box unboxing my cat looks so angry what are you so angry about sister that's my $4 Goodwill chair, if you like. <laughs> Both my cats are just watching my dog with like evil stares. So we're gonna open the Bark Box. My dogs love this box. It is so cute. It comes with the most adorable toys, honestly. I'm always so surprised at how good quality the toys are too, because my dog is a Border Collie and she has a puppy, so she's still teething, so she is a heavy chewer. 
She's playing with her gnome right now. So, I'm gonna open this guy up. Oh, this one's theme is Fairground Hounds, which is so cool because um, in my last weekly movie vlog, I will link it up below if you haven't watched it, our kidnap box was Carnival, so this is really cool. She is playing with toys. So, it comes with this cute little box inside the box and open it up. Oh, that is absolutely freaking adorable. Okay, I'll show you what she got. Oh, ooh, I can't be squishing things. She's gonna come over here and be like, what you got? Oh, oh, that's cute. It's Flush and Fish, so it is this little goldfish bag with this goldfish, and I'm assuming we put this goldfish inside the bag. Okay, Claire, hold on. I'll get it for you, baby. My dog wants it. Can I, oh, can I, can I get it for you? Okay, so I'm gonna put the fish in there for you. You're excited, I know. Here you go. Here you go. All right, next toy she got. Um, that's not even. The next one she got is, oh my God. In Queso in Emergency. And it's, oh my gosh, that is so cute. Little nachos in this little bowl, adorable. She also got a Womania. It is a little, sheep that's freaking cute so i had to just upgrade my dog's box because these are small and extra small toys and she's getting to be quite a big dog so we she is going to weigh up to 40 pounds when she's fully grown thank you for kisses she's going to weigh up to 30 pounds when she's fully grown so we need to get her bigger toys so we opted for the medium size box next okay which one do you want oh you want the sheep i'm great got it Next, she got a Thinker's Dog Tree Stick. It's duck. She got small bites. Great. For, I use these to train her. So when she comes out from going potty or she does something good, this is what we use these for. So she got these. And she got pork dogs, which are like little sticks. And, oh my god, I need some of these toys. Oh my god, she should have got a could have got a pig. She could have got a corn dog. I wonder if they have those for sale online. Oh, a lemonade. Oh, that's cute. So basically, they give all the toys they could have gotten on the bottom. And I think if they have any for sale online, I might buy some because they're super cute. My Poochie got a bark box. I think I'm gonna take a picture of it and she's gonna have to give up that toy she's chewing on. What one's she gonna pick? What one's she gonna pick? <gasps> she picked a nacho! A nacho. Anyway, that is the beginning of this reading vlog. I'm excited to read this week and I am gonna go do that. Do you like my earrings? They are little leaves because I'm ready for fall. So yeah, my dog's playing with her toys and I will update you guys later when I've actually read something the usual. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome back to the reading vlog. This angle is just horrible. <sighs> okay, so I don't know who I think I am, but I finished Lover or Loser. This is like the second weekly reading vlog in a row. I finished a book the first day. Who, who am I? But this book was so predictable. Like everything that happened was so predictable. Like if you think of a romance novel, and you open it up and everything that goes wrong goes wrong and you know by the end it's just gonna be fine and you know by the end it's just gonna be fine that was this book at the beginning she wanted a restaurant she wanted to be with her husband well guess what she owned a restaurant she was with her husband the thing I liked about this book is it shows that <clears throat> when a marriage gets bad Divorce isn't always the answer and they do go to marriage therapy and that's something that I really liked in the aspect of this story because Therapy is so cliche to a lot of people. They're like, oh therapy doesn't work In college. Well, I'm still in college last two semesters two semesters ago I took a intro to group therapy course where literally my class was just a therapy session and it was literally the most eye-opening class I've ever taken and I highly recommend therapy if you, if for everybody could benefit from a little bit of therapy and I just really recommend therapy for anything, even marriage therapy because I, I always think 
if you have been married for a really long time, there's something that brought you together to be married. That's why I always tell my friends, don't get married just because you have a baby or just don't get married just because you have been together for a long time. Get married if you can see yourself with this person for the rest of your life. And that's really something that I push because I don't think, I don't know, I feel like it's hard to say you will 100% marry somebody that you'll be with for the rest of your life, but don't do a spur of the moment thing because marriage isn't something that you do spur in the moment, I guess. I don't know. But... Finish Love Her Loser, I rated it two stars just because I did like some of the aspects of it, but it was really slow. Like, I swear you guys watched my reading vlog. It's taken me like three weeks. She just looks at me like I do nothing wrong. But it did take me like three weeks to finish this, so it was super, super slow. So I gotta find another book to read now. But I think I'm gonna go downstairs and start taking out my cabinets in my basement. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what I'm going to be doing down there. I really hope it's not cold down there. My basement's always super cold for whatever reason. So I'm going to go down there and show you guys what I'm going to do. I don't think I've ever showed you guys my basement. So I'll show you guys my basement. Um, so when we moved into this house, we really were just focusing on the top, like our main floor, because that's obviously where we were going to live. So we actually just painted our bedroom. We lived here since March and we just painted our bedroom a couple weeks ago. Our last room we actually have to finish is our laundry room, but our laundry room is weird. Our laundry room used to be a bathroom, and we can tell it used to be is because it has all the water lines and stuff that are like, not water lines, but like where the sink plugs in to the wall and stuff are still in there. So we think once we have kids and stuff, it will probably reroute that down to the basement because we have a huge bathroom in our basement. It just makes more sense to reroute it down there. But we really have to paint that room and... We have to get a folding table I think we're gonna get to like fold our laundry on and put our cat stuff underneath it because we have our glitter box in there and they're, um, we have these, these big Tupperware tubs of food, like we put our dog and our cat food in it because if we leave in the dog and the cat food out in bags, my cats will climb into it thinking they own the place. So yeah, but that's the last room we have to do up here. Every other room is done. Um, as you can tell, I decorated everything. Hobby Lobby is my friend. And so yeah, so I am gonna show you my basement. I'm gonna put on some shorts though because I'm pantless and I will start tearing down my cabinets and I think I'll take you with me. Oh my gosh, that hiccup rattled my entire, your body, what? Okay, bye. Okay guys, so I'm in my basement. I took off my glasses. Um, I'm just gonna show you my basement and kind of what the idea is. So when we first moved in, they had it painted purple down here with blue trim and it was super dark. So we literally painted everything white and black floors. I think it looks really good. We're gonna put down some fun bright rugs and it's gonna be like a great little hangout area. So the door right under our door that goes directly down into the first room the is closed right now because my cats hang out in that room that room is done it is my fiance's kind of game area so he has like all his fun game stuff in there um but this is our big area where we're gonna make it a hangout area so when i say tear out these cabinets i will be tearing out all these cabinets these are all our pop cans someone send help so i'm gonna start tearing out all these cabinets we are going to leave that one because it, it still is a really nice cabinet and we're just going to use it for storage and we're keeping this bar. So we've painted it white. And then I got some really nice marble contact paper to put on top to make a little bar. We're gonna get some bar stools. Um, we are gonna put some bookcases along this wall. It'll be really nice for filming, first of all, because it's really bright down here in, in the evening. And then over here, we're planning on getting a pool table. We just haven't got it yet because down here isn't done. So, and then obviously in here is our water heater, our furnace, all that stuff. I'm really loving how it's put away in these cabinets. And then this is our door that leads to our backyard. We live in the woods, if you can't tell. And then this is our really nice bathroom. It's actually so much bigger than the one upstairs. I have to clean because we had to redo the drop ceilings in here. And then it's see, it's actually super roomy in here. I have to replace this contraption because it's actually terrible. I'm not gonna repaint it because it is blue. I don't mind the blue, but I just gotta get decorations to match. So yeah, and then we store all our napkins, paper towels, 10,000 rolls of toilet paper, and then extra blankets and stuff in here. So yeah. 
So yeah, that is what I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna work on getting these cabinets out of here because I'm sick and tired of looking at them. So I'll update you when I get some work done. Hello everyone, happy Monday. Welcome back to the reading vlog. So do you remember yesterday when I said it was gonna be a good day, a good week for the reading vlog? Yeah, I was living in a fantasy world. So yesterday, while attempting to take down my cabinets, a water line broke, and long story short, I fell down and it broke my arm. Amazing, isn't it? So, that happened. Wanted an update on that. Go me. Um, but yeah, I really did break my arm. It's in a king sling. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So, that's cool. Um, that happened. I am reading Dirty For Me still. It is okay. Um, mm, ah, ah. I don't know how I feel about it. It's definitely very over the top romantic, which is kind of annoying for me, but it's fine. That's where I'm at in my reading. That's all I've done. It's I've been on the struggle bus, so I hope you can be okay with that. And I'll talk to you guys later when I'm feeling less terrible about myself. Hi, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well because I'm not. I didn't update the vlog yesterday because I it was my first day back at work with a broken arm and it was just not fun. And Sunday I broke my arm. So let me let's let's talk about this, okay? Updated you guys that I was going downstairs and tearing on my cabinets. Well, I tore down most of my cabinets and then I got to the sink. So I had my fiance call his dad and ask if it would be okay if I pulled up the water line, just like that little like plastic piece. He said, yeah, go ahead. So I pulled up on it and the whole little mechanism that turns the water off and onto the sink just came up and water started going everywhere and I didn't know where my water shut off was. If you own a home, know where your water shut off is. And I was freaking out and I was trying to hold the water in the pipes I didn't want my basement to flood. And I went to run to my phone to call the fire department because I didn't know what to do and I fell and I put my arm behind me to catch myself and I didn't catch myself I broke this bone that's right here like you can, can you see the cast that's not my white skin so yeah that's what happened um, update you on that anyway <laughs> what you're here for the reading aspect um, I finished love her loser like I said and then I am now reading dirty like me I cannot remember what who is it by but I'm reading it on my Kindle and let me tell you the amount of highlights I put in this book because it's so ridiculous but it's okay like it's not so ridiculous that I hate it which is good so there's that um, I haven't picked up an actual physical copy of a book yet I don't really know what I'm in the mood to read so Kindles are really good for that because like I have such a big option but well, my internet's been out at my house for like a week now and I'm about to call Xfinity and be like, am I gonna get a refund? But I really need my internet so I can get more books. I need my internet so I can upload to tomorrow's video. I just need the internet. And my classes start and I need my, I need freaking internet for my classes, okay? But yes, but my book of the month came today. So I'm gonna unbox it because I'm actually really excited for this month's books. So normally when I do book of the month, when I pick my books, I don't normally get all three books as this month's pick. Normally I'll pick like one or two books out of this month and then for my other add-on, I would normally pick a, like a book that was like previous. So I was gonna pick The Stars and the Blackness Between Us, my book of the month pick, like for my uh, add-on. It was like from like March, I think. But these books look so good and I was afraid they were gonna sell out. So I just picked these. So, I can't do the iconic cutting because my arm is broken. So, I'll make the noise for you. How does that sound? Okay, you ready? I wanna make the noise for you. Oh, I, I was horrible at that. Oh my God. Okay, I cut it open. They didn't plastic wrap my books this month. I'm so mad. Book of the month, plastic wrap my books because my mailman likes to leave my books where they can be rained on and it kind of acts, ooh, these books are huge this month. Why do I feel like these are so big? First, I got a little bookmark that says, hold that thought. That is freaking cute. I love the book of the month bookmarks 
because they are just like little cardboard ones, but they come in handy because I lose bookmarks a lot. And Zelda, can you like get out of my way? So the first book I picked this month was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. So I heard a lot of people say really good things about this book. I just read an a, a read I read a video. I watched an Olivia Reads a Latte video and she was reading this book and listening to it as an audiobook. She said the audiobook was really good because it, like, the podcast parts of it are literally read as a podcast. Like, it's like, there's like a little music that plays and she, like, narrates it as a podcast, which is super cool. I really like that. I really like when audiobooks kind of bring the book to life and, like, I like it when there's, like, more than one person narrating it. So, like when you have different characters, there's like different characters talking. Because I don't like when one audiobook speaker uses the same voice for all the characters. I don't know. If I listen to an audiobook, I just feel like it should be brought to life. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that's how I feel. But I'm really excited to listen to the audiobook for this. I heard the audiobook was really good. Um, it's about this lady who runs a podcast and it's like a true crime podcast and she got famous because she helped solve a really long murder and she helped with the guy that did it behind bars and so she's kind of going to do a new one so she's going to find a new crime to investigate so she goes to this really small town and she's investigating this rape that this kid is accused of rape and this kid is the, the oh my gosh I cannot talk why do you guys watch me this kid is accused of raping the police chief's daughter that's what I meant to say and she is covering the story to try to get this guy basically she doesn't think he did it and she wants to make sure he gets off free um but the other main character she her mo sister went missing 25 years ago and she's trying to enlist the help of this podcaster to help solve her sister's murder or disappearance and um when i was reading the synopsis it says that a lot of similarities show up between the two and i'm just really excited it's a thriller mystery and i i really have been enjoying thrillers lately they've been getting me going and if i'm gonna be off of medical leave because of my arm in a couple weeks i'm definitely gonna be picking this up as an audiobook the next picked this month was Atomic Love by Janine Field. So I'm in love with historical romance and historical fiction. I don't know why but I really like like 20th century 19th century book particularly if they're set in the United States. For some reason once they get set in like England or something I start to get a little frustrated and I like 15th century romance like medieval times romance but they start to aggravate me after a while when the gender the, when the woo when the gender roles kind of annoy you because like we live in a time where like women can do whatever they want oh my god women can do whatever they want and in that time women were still really oppressed and it was kind of like what the man says go that kind of annoys me for whatever reason and i know that might be weird but it does so i have a hard time reading historical romance that was set that far back I had like a mental breakdown in my bathroom the other day because my hair looked like garbage and I like to look decent when I go out and about. I don't like to look like a hobo and I look like a hobo because I can't really do anything with my arm. I have to wear shirts that are like way too big because it's really hard to get shirts over my arm and I can't put my hair up because I have one arm. Hey, so. This book is a historic, it's like historical romance and historical fiction. So his, his romance, that's a new word. So it's about this girl who is, oh my god, how do I describe this? Hold on, let me read the synopsis again because, okay, I remember what it's about. So it's about this girl and she is kind of like really, really successful on her own terms. It is the 1950s in Chicago, which is like ugh, my dream, hello. She is kind of living on her own terms, she's having a great time, and she was having a really, really, really passionate love affair with this guy named Thomas. Thomas kind of goes MIA. She doesn't hear from him for a while. And finally, Thomas contact, what does my cat do? Finally, Thomas contacts her and asks her if she can help him. He works for the FBI now, and he wants her to go undercover and kind of spy on the Russians during the Cold War. So it just, you know what? This just sounded like such a good story. I'm really in love with World War II 
Cold War Vietnam stories. I watched This Is Us. I don't know how many of you guys watched This Is Us. My favorite show, hands down, 100%. But I watched This Is Us, and when they talk about Jack going to Vietnam, for some reason that hit something in me, and I had to research the Vietnam War for probably like, also why did we enter the Vietnam War? Why? It's a, listen, I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me or disagree, and I'm sorry if you disagree, but I feel like America puts their nose where they don't belong a lot. My cat is rubbing all up against me. She's like, hello, mother. Yes, but this is just about the Cold War and us putting our noses where they don't belong because that's what we do. And next, I got the Space Between Worlds by Micah Johnson. So this seemed like a really good book. It is a sci-fi, which is amazing. I'm in love with it. Also, Book of the Month did something different for this, and they put kind of a little prompt on the back, which I don't think they normally do. So, this book is about, there's like, have you guys ever seen The Flash, where like The Flash is like a whole bunch of parallel universes, so like, I'm me here, but in another world, I could be like a surgeon or something. That's what this book is about. There are all these different universes, and but you can't universe hop. You can't meet your other universe self. I'm horrible at explaining things. We follow this one girl that all of her, what do they call them? Oh my god, it's like a ghost term. They call them counterparts in this book. So basically it's you, but on another world. So our main character, Kara, all of her counterparts have died on their universes. So they've died from famine, vendettas, murders, you name it, they've probably died from it. And she is the last one left. And she is enlisted, I believe, to kind of, hold on, let me read the synopsis again. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, I got it. I got it. I was close. So, Kara is one of the eight remaining counterparts of herself. So, all of her other counterparts have died from mysterious illnesses, vendettas, freaking anything you can name. They probably died from it. So, that makes her the perfect candidate for multiverse travel. So she gets to travel the multiverse. <clears throat> like, I don't even know what she's doing, but she's traveling. The, the government's like, hey, I'm gonna put you in a mysterious circumstance and you're gonna like it. So she meets one of her counterparts and when they die from really mysterious circumstances, like it's not like the other ones, like they don't know what happened to her. Kara is like the number one suspect for whatever reason because she's traveling multiverse and yeah i don't even know sci-fi thriller i don't know i read the synopsis and i was hooked i was like this is gonna be amazing will i be able to read it soon i'm really hoping so so those are the books i got this month i am super excited to read them book of the month always has really good picks and i really 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 struggle with finding good books sometimes and you know what? Book of the Month just has my books. I'm gonna go. I have to go get new work shoes because yesterday I was putting on my shoes and there's a hole in them. So I need to go get new work shoes today. I just get like cheap shoes from Walmart. They last me a couple months. It is 10 bucks. It is what it is. Zelda, you okay? But I gotta go get new shoes because there's a hole in my shoe. I think I'm gonna hit Salvation Army and see if they have any good books because... Oh, I have a video I need to edit. I have to do that too. I have to edit tomorrow's vlog still. And I have a free book haul that I need to edit, which you guys will probably see after I upload this. Basically, my library in my town, every year they go through their books. Cause I don't know if you guys know how public libraries work, but they get a budget from the city every year to buy new books. My library will get rid of all the, I don't know how they do it, but I think they do it as the books that aren't checked out in a certain period of time. So they will actually just put them out in the front lawn of the library and say, free book. So I got a whole bunch of books from there like that look really good. So I did a haul from that that I need to edit and upload. But I'm really thankful that I actually pre-uploaded or pre-filmed a ton of videos. There was like eight of them that I pre-filmed, which is really nice because I don't have to stand up and actually talk about my book. For eight videos, I can just kind of do vlogs. And vlogs are so much easier because I don't have to plan anything out. I don't have to hold anything, which my arm, I can't hold nothing. My dog is playing with my cat. So I'm going to go do that. Um, my dog is whining. I feel so bad for her. So when the fire, okay. So when all that happened on Sunday and I broke my arm, my fiance came downstairs, was holding the water so I could go upstairs wait for the paramedics. So I was sitting outside waiting for the paramedics. My dog was like two feet in front of me on her tie out and she couldn't get to me and she was crying and she didn't know what was going on. And she was chained up outside for like six hours while we were cleaning up and 
Cause like your dog, like you, you know he'll be fine outside and nobody's really worried about the dog. So she was just scared and I felt really bad because like there was nothing I could do for her. And now she's just, I'm trying, just trying to let her do her own thing. Clary! Just trying to make sure she doesn't eat my cat's food because if she goes in my office, she'll eat my cat's food. Oh, and it's almost my cat's birthday. My cat's birthday is in two weeks. We're doing a little party for them just for us because they're the girls that made me a mommy. And we are just getting them a little tuna fish cake and making them a little goodie bag of all the toys they like. Like Dorcas loves these little springy toys. They kind of look like, um, I'll post a picture of them here. I don't know if you've ever seen them before. They got them in their kitnip box one month and they went bonkers over them. So I bought them another pack and Dorcas loses them. She plays with them so much. So I think I'm gonna buy her a pack of those. She loves these little mice that rattle. They don't like jingle, they rattle. She loves those. And then she also loves these little balls that have like tinsel on the outside. I don't know how to describe it. Dorcas loves those, so I'm just gonna get her like the smallest party bag I can find and just put those toys in it for her. And then Zelda loves anything with catnip in it. Anything with catnip in it. I had a catnip plant. So I could grow my own catnip for them. Zelda ate it and got high and was rolling around on the floor begowing for I swear to you like seven hours and it was so funny but I gotta do that too I'm gonna do that today too I gotta go to Walmart and look for shoes so I'll probably just stop there and see if I can find any of those balls they like because they usually only sell them in like big packs of them and I only I want like a pack of just those balls but when she was a baby she used to run around and carry them in her mouth and obviously the balls were like the size of her head and it was so funny uh, I miss when they were little. Now they're I love them still. Okay, but I'm gonna go and I do what I need to do. I'm gonna put these books in my library and I will see you guys in a little bit. Bye! Baby, I think I'm finally starting to get you. She told me through her teeth and a perfume. I never wanna see you again. got my new shoes for school and now I'm gonna show you what I got at the store after I turn my TV on. So I like to go to my local Salvation Army for books because they are 50 cents there and usually I can find some good ones. So I'm gonna show you what I got. The first one I got was Deadly Memories by Mary Alford. I guess it's about a girl who escapes, a, like she was kidnapped and she was kept prisoner and she escapes and she's trying to find the little boy that she was trapped with. So that's the first one I got. The next one I got was A Big Sky Christmas by William W. Johnstone. Uh, that, why did I have so much trouble saying that? So the first thing that really got me was the cover. The cover is kind of, kind of reminds me of, oh my gosh, what was that? Um, when the, we pil, when we pilgrim in West. What was that called? I can't remember. My English teacher, my history teacher would be so disappointed. The Wagon Trail! Is that what it's called? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know. But it was, it's set in 1873 and it's about a group of immigrants who are wagon training to Montana and they are plagued by harsh storms and rugged terrain, outlaws and hostile Indians and the journey will be the greatest challenge these pioneers will ever, will ever face. Um, and basically they're trying to get there by Christmas. So I just thought that would be a cute, a cute book. I'm a sucker for Christmas books, so you'll see a lot of these books that I got literally are Christmas books. Um, the next one I got was Distress Sig Signal by Elizabeth Goddard. Um, and it's about a shipwreck, so I just thought that would be fun. The next one I got was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I just found this little signature one. I've never read a Jane Austen book. I hear a lot of people like are obsessed with Jane Austen. They love her, so I thought I would give her a try. So I did pick this up for 50 cents, so. The next one I got was The Seduction of an English Lady by Kathy Maxwell. So I really, really enjoy like medieval royalty romance. Like, I don't know why, it just cracks me up. The only thing that really screws me up about it is like the gender roles were obviously different in this time. And I just don't like a woman being like, push to the background, you know what I'm saying? So, but I'm really excited to read this and see what the hype is about. I have a puppy, she's two months old now, and she's just at the point where she tries to eat anything that's on my floor. So I just heard like the slow cracking of it, and I'm like, what is she chewing on? Probably something she's not supposed to be. So she's in trouble now. Sorry, my hair like is driving me nuts today. 
I got The Perfect Christmas by Debbie McComber. I feel like the only books this lady writes are Christmas books. But it doesn't seem to be that long. Uh, 200 pages and it's like one of the smaller books. I'm in love with Christmas books, like feel good Christmas books. I don't know, I love Christmas. It is my favorite holiday. And this book is about a girl who really just wants to have a husband and kids and she goes to a professional matchmaker and I'm gonna, I guarantee you the matchmaker and her are gonna fall in love because that's, you know what's gonna happen. Next, I got another De Debbie McComber. If I'm not saying that right, someone fix my grammar. So I really like this book because the snow is like glittery. Can you see it? Um, Where Angels Go, and the background says, what would holidays be without a new Christmas story? For real. Um, so I'm assuming this book is about angels who have assignments on earth, which I've actually heard a lot of. So I'm not religious in any way, but I really find it interesting, like some of the stories they say about religion. So one of the stories that I've heard, my grandmother's very religious and my dad actually grew up really religious. So one of the things I really heard was that angels have these like duties when they come to earth so they have to like fulfill these duties like some of them um they have to fulfill like watching after somebody one of them has to like bring someone to the light i don't know but i've heard that so that's going to be really interesting to read like these angels assignments next i got witness protection unraveled by maggie k black so apparently this is about a family who leaves witness protection and they aren't fully like safe yet i don't know and from what i understand they leave you in witness protection for like a long time so i'm excited to give this one a go i really like these like little five dollar books from walmart i have quite a few of them oh and these books still have the little free things in them i'm totally submitting all of those next i have undercover memories by lenora worth 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 it's about a girl who is a private investigator that gets amnesia um, and there's a bunch of people trying to kill her. My neighbors mow the lawn at the most like annoying time. Okay. Next I have An Angel for Christmas by Heather Graham. I just really like the front of hardcover Christmas books. I think they're so cute, but I hate when authors put their entire face in the back of a book. It annoys me. I don't need to see your face that large. Susan Miller. Susan Mallory, Christmas on 4th Street, which I'm assuming they're gonna get married at Christmas time, which, yes, girl. Um, I don't even know what this is about. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. So she gets a second chance at light and she is opening her own Christmas store. That's my like dream job. So I live in Michigan, Michigan rep, um, and one of our favorite vacation spots is Frankenmuth. And this is because the Christmas store is there. I absolutely love Bronner's Christmas Wonderland. It is my favorite store in the world. Every single time we go to Frankenmuth, we go there. We get ornaments every year. We get one with our family on it. So me and the cats, my fiance and my dog, we get one with all of us on it. We always get a family ornament for my mom. And then we also always get a anniversary ornament. So we've gotten an ornament every single year we've been together. We got one that was our for Chris, first Christmas and then every year since then, we've just gotten like, they have like little animals and they customize it for you. So we just get our names on it in the year. So we still gotta do that this year. We have a date planned, so that's exciting. Okay, but yeah, I love Christmas books. Honestly, I wanted to have a Christmas wedding, but it's just not realistic, so. I am just gonna soak it all up with the Christmas. The next book I got was Miss Paradigan's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is this edition. I think it's a movie edition. I actually haven't read this book. This was really big when I was in high school. I think it first came out when I was in high school and I didn't know it was a show now, which is kind of exciting. So I'm really excited to read this. I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be exciting. I think the only reason I didn't get it when it was actually like filled with um like the cover was that creepy girl because it scared me so i didn't get it so yeah next one i got was into deep by sharon dunn so i'm a, this one is about at-risk teens a girl who mentors at-risk teens and she witnesses a drug deal and suddenly she's in a killer's crosshairs and to protect her an undercover dea agent must keep her close as her pretend boyfriend oh they're gonna fall in love I already know it. It's a love inspired suspense. Girl, you already know. Next I got was His Amish Suspense by Le Leah Bale. Listen, 
Don't sleep on Amish romance. <laughs> because for some reason, I picked up an Amish romance like last year and I freaking loved it. I don't know what it was about the Amish romance, but I was such a fan of it. Couldn't put it down. So, I got this. Next, I got The Holiday Secret by Katherine Springer. As you guys know, I can't say no to Christmas books. I think I bought every Christmas book that was there. I will be hosting a Christmas readathon this year that I am so excited for, so make sure you stick around for that because I will be announcing it probably in mid-November. So, well, technically I just did announce it, but I'll be doing a like an actual video announcing it in mid-November, and I'm so excited. I'm gonna try to find a couple booktubers to host it with me because that's just gonna be so much fun. So yes, this one, the Holiday Secret. Um, listen, this book, oh my gosh, my arm. Okay, so my arm's on a cast and I can't move it. So my wrist is like in pain because of how it's been sitting. So, huh, trying to like force my hand to move around. Um, this book gives me Hallmark movie vibes. This is because it's about a girl who travels to her hometown and she meets this little girl that she falls in love with and you know she's gonna fall in love with the dad and that is just Hallmark movie vibes, okay? Next, Shattered Secrets by Janie, Janie, Jane, Jane M. Choate. Got distracted, sorry. I'm watching 22 Drum Street and I haven't watched the movie in so long. Our internet's out, so I've just been watching movies and my fiance has so many movies that are old that I haven't seen in such a long time. I haven't seen 22 Jump Street since it came out, so that's what I'm watching. But Shattered Secrets by Jane, and it was at that part where like they're high and like, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. But this book is about a kidnapped girl and people be dying. I don't know. I really love these like love inspired suspense books. I don't know why. I really enjoy them. Next, because you know there's more. The Twins Family Christmas by Lee Tobin McLean. I really like these love inspired heartwarming Christmas books because they just remind me of a Hallmark movie and I love Hallmark movies. Next, I got Five Golden Rings by Kat Martin, Joe Beverly, Katherine Sutcliffe, and Brenda Joy. So this is just five little stories. I want Christmas to come! Mm, that's it. Next I have Killer Riches by Chassie West. I think this book is about a girl who is babysitting and she gets a ransom phone call and I'm not sure but... Next I have Santa Baby that needs cleaned. Ooh, I'm gonna clean this book. Santa Baby by Jennifer Cruz. This book is a, oh my God, it's three separate stories. I love Christmas romance, okay? You got me sold. It is The Blood of a Stone by Richard Bryan Jr. Um, It's just about warlocks. And honestly, I can't say no to a book about warlocks, okay? Next, I have The Christmas Tree Lane by Debbie McComber once again. Oh. 1225 Christmas Tree Lane. 1225! That's 1225! That's Christmas! I just seen Tiny Puppies and Christmas, so. Next, I got The Lost Boy by Dave Peltzer. So I had to read A Child Called It for my, literally I read it like five years ago in high school, and I loved it so much. It is definitely a very heartbreaking story about child abuse, so if you're going to read it, I, I want you to know, be prepared, because it is very graphic at times. But this is kind of the second part of his childhood through the foster system and all that stuff. Because I think once a child is beaten and abused and put into foster care, I really think they lose their sense of identity and their sense of family. And I think that's something that's very hard to get back as a child. So I really am excited to reread The Lost Boy. Because I, I just, Dave Peltzer's story is so compelling and it's so, 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 so heartbreaking on how somebody could treat their child like that. Because I know we all get mad at our children and nephews and nieces and you know, those kids you have in your life, but none of us would ever go to the extent that Dave's parents did. So, so I'm assuming this book about his wife that's gone missing and how he's a suspect, which I feel like is, the case a lot of the times when a, yeah, or when a partner goes missing, you are like the ultimate suspect. Boy, you did it. So I got this one. And finally, I got Kiki Strike by Kristen Miller, the Inside the Shadow City. Kiki Strike, the Emperor's Tomb by Kristen Miller. And 
Kiki Strike and the Darkness Dwellers by Kristen Miller. This is actually a three part series and I found the entire series there and this series was two bucks. So I got this. I'm not sure what it's about. Um, I think it's a young adult or a middle grade. Yeah, I think it might be a middle grade. So I think I might keep it for my friends who is a middle grade teacher. I don't know, with a dash of romance. So maybe it's middle grade. I don't know, we'll find out. But those are the books that I got today. I don't know how to say no. I mean, I only spent $16, so I guess I can't be too angry about it. But, oh, and I told you I went to the store for new shoes. These are the new shoes I got for work. I buy like 10 bucks Walmart shoes for work because I don't really like run around too much at work. So my shoes don't get like worn down too easily, but. But I really, really, really want to rearrange my bookcases. Even though I have a broken arm, I still might do it. <laughs> Jill's gonna punch me in the face if I break my arm again. But I think I might do that since I have a little bit of time and then I need to make dinner for Joe, but I don't know what I wanna make yet. So I think I'm just gonna go do that. I really need to edit this video for tomorrow. I'll probably do that too. I'll probably start editing the video now. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. This vlog's gonna be so long this week. I'm so sorry. I've been like in such a chatty mood. Look at my kitty. Look at her. Darkest. She's like, what do you want? What you want? Okay, I gotta load my dog out because she's not in trouble anymore. So, talk to you guys later. Okay guys, hello, it's very late. So this is the last update for today. I rearranged my bookshelves with my broken arm because that's how I choose to live my life. So, <laughs> these are my new bookcases. Oh, don't they look nice? Up here, I just have adult and young adult romance. I think it looks real colorful. And then literally these three shelves are all fantasy. I did not realize I had so many fantasy books, so that's cool. And then down here, this one is mystery and this one is mystery slash historical fiction. Here I have all my book of the months and fairy loot editions. Now up there is just stuff for school, so. And then this is all young adult. That's not very organized. And then all my Christmas books because y'all know I have a lot of them. And I think I'm missing a couple, but that's fine. And then I have some more young adult. And then over here I have some middle grades and some more young adult. And then I have graphic novels and a textbook apparently. A Stephen King book, graphic novels, and then my Disney series. And a cat. Hello everyone, welcome back to the reading vlog. It is Friday night, so happy Friday. I hope you guys had a good week. I have updated in a couple days. Oh, I'm struggling with the broken arm. I thought it was gonna be fine and I wasn't gonna be mad about it, but today at work, like I'm gonna be real, I've always been real with you guys, and today at work I was super frustrated because my shoe came untied. I just got this new pair of shoes and I had my fiance tie them for me because I can't tie them because I only one arm and it came untied today at work. And I, my dog's drinking my cat's water. My dog was drinking my cat's water and she's not allowed to, so that's cool. Apparently my cats need water too, so I'm reminding myself to do that. I needed to tie my shoes today at work and I couldn't, so I had a breakdown and I was crying and I ended up tying my shoe, but like it was just the fact that like I couldn't do something that simple. So yeah, but I don't have my orthopedic surgeon appointments to next week, which is also even more frustrating because I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if I'm gonna need surgery, if they're just gonna wait for it to set. I don't know. So literally everything is so hard. I have not picked up a physical read since Love Her or Loser. Um I don't know, I have a lot of books I want to read. I rearranged my bookcase and I realized I have so many unread fantasy books. So I'm going to find a fantasy book on my shelf that I want to read and probably go from there. But I also have a lot of romance books that I really want to read. So I guess I'm just going to have to decide what mood I'm in and then go from there. I think I might pick up The House on the Cerulean Sea because it's been sitting on my shelves and it looks so good. And I just feel like I really need to read it. Yeah. I am currently reading on my Kindle, um, Dirty Like Me. It is like one of those super cheesy 
overly sexualized romantic books that like your grandma reads in secret and it's kind of hilarious like because I have a really old Kindle it's like the first Kindle fire generation and um, it's funny because I've been highlighting all of, like the scenes that make me uncomfortable and there are so many of them it is so funny so that's what I'm reading on there um but yeah that's that's about it. I don't really have a lot to update other than the fact that I had a mental breakdown. I got a new rug for my office that I'm very excited for. But I got a new... Yeah, but... I'm really excited for my Orth O appointment. Because I want to know what's going on with this arm. Because I'm struggling. Um, but there's only one more day in this reading vlog. And I feel like we haven't got any reading done. And my cats are fighting. But I did redo my bookcases and I'm loving it. I did them by genre so at the very top I have young adult and adult romance because I have a ton of romance books for some reason. I don't know why. And then under that I have three shelves, well technically six shelves of fantasy. I don't know why I have so many fantasy books. And then under that I have mystery, thriller, and historical fiction and then on my bookshelves that are over here that still need to be organized by um, genre is all my young adults. So there's contemporary, there's fiction, there's contemporary, there's general fiction, there's romance, there's just like everything's shoved over there and I really need to, I really need to go through it because, but I'm really sad because I thought my owl crate was going to be this month, this, here, this week and I was like, man, three unboxings and a one reading vlog? What is that about? <sighs> three months old in a couple weeks and my, er, no, May, June, July, August, September, four months old in a couple weeks. My cats are going to be a year old in a couple weeks, and oh my gosh, I got them a birthday present, and I'm so excited, and yeah, but you guys will see all that, because I weekly vlog. There's my dog back there, you see her? Being a jerk, doing what she's not supposed to do, watch. But I will talk to you guys in the morning. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of reading, fill my cat's water bowl, because it's empty, and I'll just talk to you guys tomorrow for the very last update of this reading vlog. I'm really hoping I can finish this stupid romance book. Cause I started it three days ago and it just, I started it three days ago and it just needs to happen. So I'll talk to you guys then. Bye. I don't even know where my glasses are, so it's fine. Um, I just wanted to end this reading vlog. I look greasy. I don't, I'm not greasy, I swear. I just want to end this reading vlog to say thank you for watching. I finished Dirty Like Me. I will talk about it in my next reading vlog because I just don't have time to talk right now. And yes, I hope you guys are having a great week and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.